It's March 22nd, 2018, and this is your scripture reading and devotional for today. The scripture reading today is Numbers chapter 20 and 21, John 13, Psalm 37, 16 through 21, and Proverbs 7, 25 to 27. The devotional today is a clip from the lesson, The Challenge. The children of Israel had been in the wilderness for a little over a year. The majority of that time uh, encamped before uh, Mount Sinai as they were making all of the uh, preparations that God had revealed to Moses and Moses uh, then delivered to the people. Uh, It was uh, a little over a year before they were ready to, to move from uh, Mount Sinai. And as they uh, traveled from Mount Sinai, they came into the wilderness of Paran. And there's uh, many things we read uh, taking place uh, in the uh, convening uh, span of time. But when they come into the wilderness of Paran... God told Moses to have the 12 tribes uh, choose for themselves uh, leaders that would go into the land that God had promised to give them to spy out the land. You read there in chapter 13 the names of the leaders of the 12 tribes that were chosen to go out and to spy out the land. And Moses said to them in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 17, uh, Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like, uh, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. The significance of that statement uh, is uh, revealed when we see them uh, going out uh, into the land and uh, seeing the the fruit of the land. And can you imagine a cluster of grapes (laughs) so big that they had to carry it on a pole between two men? A single cluster of grapes. That was a big cluster of grapes. As a matter of fact, the place that they took the grapes from, the Valley of Eshkel, that word means cluster. It's literally the Valley of the Cluster. (laughs) They must have grown some very large grapes in that place. And so they bring back some of the fruit of the, the land after they've gone and they've spied out the land. They bring back this huge cluster of uh, grapes. They uh, bring back some, some uh, 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 figs and, and uh, other things from the, from the land. And uh, they say that it truly is a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, a, a, a term describing a very fruitful land. Uh, It was a land that was very fruitful, as they showed from the evidence of what they brought back. And when you're reading their account in chapter 13, it is all going uh, pretty well. They're giving a pretty good report, uh, encouraging, that would uh, uh, encourage the people that this is a good land that God has Uh, chosen for us, that God is going to to, uh, send us into, that God is going to give us the victory uh, over the inhabitants of this land, so it will be our land. It says there in verse 27, 
Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. And then they uh, used a very tragic word in their next statement. Nevertheless, uh, the idea being, even though it, uh, it is such a fruitful land, it is such a beautiful land, it is uh, a land that, that, that would pr provide for us so richly in everything we need, nevertheless, we can't take it. They go on to say, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. That's giants. They're talking about giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people. So you, you see there in verse 30 where it says, Then Caleb quieted the people. As the, the uh, spies are giving the report and they're saying, you know, uh, the, the fruitfulness of the land is amazing. But those people are strong. Their cities are fortified. Uh, it's very clear they're giving the indication. And you, you see it as you read on through there. They're giving the indication there's no way we can take that land. That the, the children of Israel had, had uh, begun to, to uh, murmur and cry about the condition they were in. Here they were stuck out in the wilderness and the land that God had promised them, the people in that land, there was no way that they could go in there and conquer those people. That's what they were thinking. And then Caleb spoke up and it says, Caleb quieted the people. And you can almost picture Caleb trying to get everybody's attention and saying, hey, hey, quiet down, quiet down, listen, listen, listen. And it says, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. And so in light of this uh, bad report that the, the uh, ten uh, cowardly spies had given, Caleb says, No, that's not the case. We are well able to take the land. Well, if you, you want to see why it was that Caleb was so convinced that they were well able to take the land, drop down to chapter 14 and verse 8. Or verse 6, rather. Chapter 14 and verse 6, where it says, But Joshua, the son of Nun, we see in uh, chapter 13 that, that his name was uh, uh, Hoshea, and uh, it was Moses that called him Joshua. So it says, uh, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the leader from the tribe of Ephraim, uh, Joshua, and the leader from the tribe of Judah that was amongst the twelve spies, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes... They were uh, deeply, deeply disturbed at the lack of faith they saw in their people. And they tore their clothes in grief. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. So uh, when Caleb said, we are well able to go up and take that land, he, he, he wasn't saying that because he thought uh, that they were stronger than those giants, that the, the ten cowards looked at those giants and said, we were like grasshoppers. It's significant, I think, that it says, in our own sight. See, that was a problem with their own perception, wasn't it? If they were looking at those giants dwelling in those fortified cities, through the eyes of faith, they would have seen people that God had already given them the victory over if they went in there in the might of Almighty God, in faithfulness to Him. But that's not how they looked at them. They said, we were grasshoppers in our own sight. 
They had, they had already defeated themselves in their own mind. Joshua and Caleb didn't see it that way. Joshua and Caleb saw those giants as smaller than their almighty God. If God is well pleased with us, he'll give us the victory over this land. And so when Caleb said, we are well able, he didn't say it because he thought that they were bigger and stronger than those giants. He said it because he knew that his God was bigger and stronger than those giants. Be sure to post your thoughts from today's reading in the comment section below.